Some dishes are so warm and welcoming on a chilly day, they just make you feel good. Fall favorites today on Let's Cook. Hi, welcome to Let's Cook. You know, I love the fall. And the reason I like the fall is we get to change our menus. We have different items that are available. We can cook things that take a little longer. They kind of warm the inside. So uh, let me just go over today's menu because this is a great fall menu. We're doing a mushroom barley soup. Then we're doing a shredded pork sandwich, going to be very spicy, and a golden apple pound cake. Real nice fall items because, you know, mushrooms come available. We have the root vegetables for the soup. Apples are plenty in the fall, so just out of this world. Now, the mushroom barley soup, I, I get a lot of people calling me or, or emails, and they say, Paul, I want to make this soup, or I talk to them, uh, friends of mine, they say, oh, well, I know how to make, like, two soups. Soups are very simple because soups, they're a meal in, unto themselves, and mushroom barley just kind of goes together. So to make the mushroom barley soup, we have an assortment of vegetables that we're going to be uh, sauteing. Let me just go over the ingredients for the soup itself, okay? We're going to be using two pounds of mushrooms, a pound of barley, a cup each of carrots, onions, celery, squash, and zucchini, two cups of tomatoes, four tablespoons of garlic, more if you'd like, eight cups of chicken stock, two bay leaves, and two sprigs of thyme. And of course, we have to season it with salt and pepper at the end. So to get this started, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat my pan right here, get the pan a little warm into the pan now, use a little bit of olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And then into this, we're going to start with the onions. Now, when you're making a soup, it's very easy. You could actually just take everything, put it in a liquid, and bring it to a boil, but we're not going to do that. First thing we're going to do, sweat off our onions. Now, along with the onions, I have a little bit of garlic here. Based on what you like to do with your garlic, you can slice the garlic, you can smash it, you can put it through a garlic press. What I like to do is, for this soup, because all the vegetables are whole, I just like to cut it in nice thin slivers like this. So I'll take my garlic, I just cut it in nice, thin slivers. That way, if somebody doesn't want to eat it, they don't have to. So yeah, that's that's enough slivers. Okay, so we get this in here. So get our garlic in here. We don't want this to brown. Stir this around a little bit. Then we can add our other ingredients. So I'm going to start with my squash here, my mushrooms, my parsnips, my carrots, my celery, and I cut these all different shapes here too in making this, and my squash. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just saute this a little bit, and almost as if I was making a pilaf, I'm going to add my barley, and I'm going to toast the barley in here with the vegetables as well. It's going to give it a little of a nutty flavor. You know, barley's, barley's very interesting. because Let me just give you a little bit of information about barley. Barley, like oats, has a high proportion of soluble dietary fiber and has been proven to be equal to oats in lowering blood cholesterol in humans. There are actually two types of barley. One which is covered, meaning it has a hull and is grown for malting and beer production. The second one is hullless and is sometimes called nude barley, which is milled into whole meal for food products. So when you're having that beer, just realize it came from barley. And those are just some bare facts about barley. So once I toast this off here, now I'm going to add my stock. By having a nice hot pan like this, my stock will come up quickly to a simmer. And we're going to cook this uncovered. And then after a while, once it comes up to simmer, we'll lower the heat and leave it partially covered until everything's cooked. The only thing I have to add to this is a little bit of thyme and bay leaf. And of course, I have to finish it with the tomatoes at the very end, which is a lot oftentimes what I do. We're going to take a little break, and then when we come back, we're talking a shredded pork sandwich. Fall favorites. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Let's Cook, where we are talking fall favorites. Now, this next item that I'm making is a sandwich, and it's a shredded pork sandwich out of this world. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have this beautiful loin of pork here, and I'm going to season this with some salt and pepper. 
and then we're going to start to sear this off. So make sure you season it on all sides. There's nothing like the smell in the kitchen. It reminds me of when I was a child, when my father used to sear meat because he made great stews, just the smell of the meat browning and the salt and the pepper and out of this world. So we'll take this, I'm going to put this in a pan. I'm going to start to sear this meat off which means basically we're going to brown it on all sides. When you're searing meat, do it on a high heat. Um, the oil should almost be at a point of smoking. So we're going to start to sear that. Now, the next thing we need for this is we need a little bit of apple butter because we're going to use thick of pork, apple butter. So I have an apple right here. I'm just going to take the apple now and it's a Granny Smith, but you could use a Macintosh or anything like that. I'm just going to take the apple and I'm just going to peel the apple down here getting rid of all the skin here. Just take your time. And I'm going to make the butter with this right away so I don't even have to put this in any lemon juice or anything at all. So we'll just peel our apple down. You could, if you wanted to and wanted to be real healthy, you could leave the skin on there, but you'd have to make sure you washed it real good. So I want to do that. So this is good. We'll now take our apple, slice it down this way. Nice big pieces. And then we're just going to do a rough chop because I'm going to, I have a new little puree machine here. So I'm just going to put my apple right in here. You could even break it in pieces. It's so simple. Let's take a look at our meat. We need to go back to our meat over here. Okay, it's starting to brown nicely here. Just turn it one spot there, lower my heater a little bit high. There we are, that's good. So this is, this is just a, it, it, it's, you could, it almost feels like one of those stands, you know, or a hair dryer. But what it does is it attaches right here. Then we could just puree our apple. No liquid in there. Okay. Get the apple a little pureed. Then I'll take a little bit of butter in here. Drop that butter in here. Now the butter should be at room temperature when you do this. Put the butter in here. And we're just going to mix this all together. You know, sometimes you have to treat it a little bit so it'll work. That's good. So now I have some apple butter there. I need the apple butter for my bread. Take the bread here. I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to spread the apple butter on this. This is a base for my sandwich. This is a nice, it's not a French bread. It's a Portuguese roll out of this world. So I'll just take a little bit of the apple butter here. Spread this onto the bread, and then I'm going to toast this off. So, and while this is toasting, I can go ahead and get the rest of the ingredients going for my pork. The pork does take a while to cook, so let me just get this in a pan here. We'll toast that off. Come over here. Pork, is, see how nice and brown that is? Beautiful. Now, once it's nicely seared like that, where it's nicely brown, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of hot sauce here. Right on, right on the meat there. Let that brown up a little bit. If I put that in too early, it would really have burnt. We don't want it to burn. So I put that in, sear that. I have my stock. Beautiful. Bring that to a simmer. <coughs> Along with the stock, I'm going to put some garlic cloves in here. And we're just going to let this simmer till it's almost falling apart. Da, 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 da. I already have one done right here. And, and what I do is I actually let it cool down right in the broth here, okay? And then we take this meat. You can, it's a good idea to put it in a refrigerator. And, but I already have some shredded right here because what I do is I take this piece of meat, which was this, because these were equal quantities, and I just shred the meat this way. So I have my meat nicely shredded there. Okay. And we need to get this, we need to get this toasted. Now, well, my bread is toasting now. I do need to uh, cut my jack cheese for this because there are other ingredients that go into this sandwich as well. So I have some nice jack cheese here. You could use any cheese that you'd like, cheddar cheese. So we'll just take our cheese, Nice thin slices like this, enough so that you can really cover the shredded pork. Make it nice and thin. You know, if you want, you could also buy the uh, cheese that's already shredded in the supermarket for this too. That will work for it really well too. Let's check our toast here. 
Okay, it's just about ready, almost ready to be brown. So I have my cheese ready here. I have a nice hot chili here that I'm going to use. You could use jalapeno. This is uh, a Mexican pepper right here. This will work too with the seeds. Give it a little bit of heat, not too much. So I have my chili there. I have some nice cilantro leaves here. Let's take a look here. Okay, almost there. If I think if we count to three, this will be ready. Out of this world, I love this, but you really need to get the bread nice and browned and nice and crispy. Okay, so there's two ways I can do this. I can do it like this, and I can just take this where it's just starting to toast here. Then I can take my shredded pork right here, put some of this shredded pork on this side right here, along with the shredded pork now, take a few chilies, as many as you'd like, out of this world, then a little bit of cilantro. It's going to give it a real nice flavor. Apple butter there. Then we put our Monterey Jack cheese here. Then I take this, and I'm just going to take this, pop this under the broiler, and toast it a little bit more. Get this other side toasted and melt that cheese. This will take about three minutes, which means don't go anywhere when we go to break right now, because when we come back, I'm going to show you how the sandwich looks. Plus we're talking golden apple cake. Four favorites today and Let's Cook. We'll be right back. How do you like them apples? Next time somebody's having an apple, you can say to them, did you know that you'll eat 20 pounds this year? Now, the reason we're talking apples is we are about to make a golden apple cake, but we need to finish our pork sandwich. I need to show you the shredded pork sandwich that we made here that also contains apple butter. So what we did is we took this sandwich here and we just finished it under the broiler. You can see how nice this looks. Let me just get this out of here. It's very hot but where you have the melted cheese and you have all of that out of this world. Now, to finish this, leave it open because it looks too good open, doesn't it? We'll just take, we're just going to cut this using a serrated knife, set this up on a plate right here, and then almost like a French dip, where I would take it and a little bit of the broth that you braised the pork in for dipping, Put a little bit of that there. Finish it with a little bit of fresh cilantro on top. Out of this world. So there's our pork sandwich for fall. Now next, we have to make our apple cake. Now to make the apple cake, the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to caramelize some apples. So I have my pan here. I'm going to heat my pan. Into my pan, I'm just going to put, oh, roughly about two tablespoons of butter here. Along with the butter, going to add some sugar and some diced Granny Smith apples. And what we're going to do with this is just let this start to brown up, just to, to caramelize a little bit. We want to caramelize the apples or brown them, but not cook them all the way through. We don't want them to turn too soft. So we'll let these start to brown up right here. And while that's browning up, we can make the batter. Now to make the batter, what I've done right here is in my mixer right here, I've already creamed some butter and sugar so that it's nice and soft. So now once this is creamed, I'm just gonna take, scrape down the sides here a little bit, and then I'm going to add my eggs to this. So when you add your eggs, butter and sugar already creamed, it's taken on some air. We'll just take one egg at a time. When you add the eggs, make sure you break the egg in a bowl. That way, if you're like me and you always get a little bit of shell there, you can hold back and not put any shell in there. So I'll get that egg in there. I got a little piece of shell there, get rid of that. Another egg. This is also the leavening agent for the uh, batter itself. So add my last egg in here. We're going to let this just kind of whip up a little bit. We'll scrape down the sides one more time. What I add to this now is I also have a little bit of milk I'm going to put in here and my vanilla. Now the dry ingredients, easiest way to get the dry ingredients into the pan is to take a piece of parchment paper or wax paper, doesn't really matter, a sifter, take your flour, 
salt and baking powder and sift them together. What this does is this does two things. One, it gets rid of any of the lumps in the flour. And secondly, it incorporates a little bit of air into the flour, which is going to help lighten up the cake a little bit too. So let's look at this over here. This is almost good to go. I just need to scrape down this one side right over here. Be very careful when you're doing this, not to ever stick anything in the mixer when it's operating. So now just put this on a nice slow speed like this. The reason I have it on parchment paper is it's so easy to add this now, it becomes almost any proof where I can just shake this, especially if you have one of these stand mixers like this, just works really well. And again, this is a very simple, simple fall cake. So all I do with this now is just mix it till it comes together. It's good. My apples here are almost brown. I'm going to take this off now, just till it mixes together. Come over here, get all of the batter that might be left on here. Now I have to fold my apples into this as well. Now, when I go to fold the apples into this, if there's any flour that's not properly incorporated, I can go ahead and incorporate that now, but I can't put the apples in hot. Let's take a look at these apples. They're not cooperating. That's why I started to saute them a little bit early. And that's also why I already have some sauteed here that browned and cooled down. And you can see what these look like where they got, they retained their shape. They got nice and brown. These now cold apples I'm going to fold into the batter here. So just get these apples right in here. Fold this just till the apples are in the batter. You can see it says somewhat of a tight batter. Beautiful, out of this world. Take this now. We'll put this into a pre, a buttered and floured cake pan. Yeah, the batter, by the way, when you're doing this has gotta be stiff enough so that the apples don't sink to the bottom of the batter. Because then you'll end up having a, actually it would be end up kind of turning into an apple upside down somewhat cake, but not planned. So we take here, take this, we'll spread this gently. We're going to bake this. This is a dense cake, so it takes a little while to bake. You're going to bake this for 45 to 50 minutes, 50 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, just want to show you the apples here. See how nice they look? That's just what you want them to do. Just caramelize like that a little bit, just like that, and then cool them down. Let me get this in the oven here. Uh, take out the one I have right here. We're going to put this on a rack, let this cool down a little bit before we try and take it out. We're going to take a little break. And then when we come back, we're cutting into our cake and we're finishing our mushroom barley soup for fall favorites. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Let's Cook, where we are talking fall favorites. Now, right before we went to break, I took my apple cake out of the... Uh, oven. I let it rest a little bit. I have a plate right here. I'm just going to take and unmold this once it cools down. Okay. Oh, it's one of my favorites. I mean, if you like apples, you like fall, little powdered sugar on this. Now, the reason we put the powdered sugar on there is just as a little extra sweetness. Also a little cinnamon on this. It's really nice too. Okay. And then we'll just Cut into this delicious looking cake. So you can get an eye on it. Doesn't that look great? Now, the other thing we need to do is we have our mushroom barley soup left here, which is simmering. My barley is um, nice and tender. Now, the only thing I need to do with this is I just need to add my tomatoes to this. And then taste this. For a little salt, needs a little bit. Needs a little bit of pepper too, just a little bit. And this is now good to go. So I'll just dish up some in the soup here and you can see how wonderful this looks. Doesn't this look great? Out of this world. Here's a very healthy soup. And you can also, you know, you can, the great thing about this soup, you can make it with vegetable stock as well so that uh, it can be vegetarian. Well, I love the fall. 
I love the change of seasons and I like the menu that I made today. You have a great day. Thanks for watching Let's Cook and we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.